So, Moy, welcome to the Chappy Chats podcast. It is so good to have you on board. How are, how are you, first of all? Thanks, buddy. Uh, right now I'm tired, but generally speaking, I'm good. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I know. I know, I know when I first asked you, you said, oh, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and make it because I always know that because of the line of chaplaincy work that you do, we'll talk a little bit about it later, that you're running on a very tight schedule. So you've literally walked yeah. into the door, said, probably uh, ignored your family, went, I've got an interview to go to. 100%. 100%. I literally walked in the door and I said to my husband, which room are you going to be in? Because I'm going to need this space. <laughs> right, 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 right. Him He's and like, I wait. have divided and conquered the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Moi, give us a bit of detail. Where are you based and what role yeah. of, or, or what form of chaplaincy are you involved in? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, thanks for the opportunity as well. Uh, this is fun, fun, fun to chat. Yeah. Uh, um, Hi, everybody. Moy Styles, currently serving as a chaplain for um, Advent Care Age Care, uh, which is based in Melbourne. So I, yeah, I guess I'm in the healthcare yeah. sector, yeah. but specifically our aged care um, now, sector. Yeah. And one thing that most people who, who probably watch this won't know that for years, Moy was a church, is, is a church pastor, not was, is. Once a pastor, always yeah. a pastor. Right. And all, as long as I've known Moy, she's been in youth ministry, uh, working with mm. young people, young adults, and then also yeah. pastoral ministry. So when I heard that you had become the chaplain in aged care, I'm like, what? I mean, yeah. it's cool. That's everybody's reaction. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I want to know from, from you, when, when the call yeah. came to you, again, it's a different field. It's healthcare. It's aged care. Mm. How did you, I mean... Was it a yes because, oh, well, I might as well do something that right. earns a bit of money or, or was sure. it an answer to prayer? Like, I'm really mm. interested to hear that journey. That's awesome. Well, it's so funny you say that because this time last year, I didn't even know what I was going to be doing a year, you know, this, like, this oh, exact that's right. time. Because yeah. we had just Give us a bit of context. Uh-huh. So we had just moved back from the from the States um, and we had moved back to Australia not knowing what we were going to do next, you know. So but one of the things that and I think you've heard me say this as well, that one of the things that we had said, or at least I articulated out well, out, out loud, as well as in in writing, I said, Lord, um, we're going in faith, even though it broke my heart to leave the state to my community there. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Um, <laughs> it's a whole nother. That's a whole nother thing. That's right. I just, we made a really hard decision to come back. Uh, COVID, let's, that's enough. Um, and then we said, open, open palms, open heart. That wow. was kind of a season of me going, okay, God, you've always led, you will continue to lead. So I go back with an open heart, open palm, open palm, open heart. And so in August, uh, my friend, Alyssa, uh, she said to me, she's like, hey, we need someone just to come till December to, you know, to Advent Care Whitehorse. Uh, would you be interested? And I'm like, mm, not really. I'm looking at doing a, you know, I'm actually looking to do a sabbatical. You know, this is an opportunity. Um, but then she's like, oh, that's fine. She asked me again and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like legit. I know for those of you who are like, this is my passion. This is my calling. For me to start with was like, yeah, of course I'm going to come and help you. Of yes. course, and I'm, you know, as a Samoan, looking after the elderly, just culturally speaking, right. is part and parcel of being a cultured person, you know, yeah. a, a cultural Samoan. Um, it's, it comes, it's part of our DNA to look yeah. after our elderly. So, and that's why it made sense not, for me. Yeah. And that's why <laughs> it made sense for me. I'm like, age care. I never thought, because I guess in my context, I'd always think, well, usually, when we get these opportunities, it's either at the end of retirement, you know what I mean? Closer to right. the end of retirement. Oh, we need someone to be a chaplain at a retirement or an aged yeah. care facility. But this is well, quite we obviously because we don't know where to put that person. We don't know where to put that person. Them at aged care. Yeah. So it was interesting oh, to go, I man, that that's really, that's really un, um, not unusual, but like odd. But then it made sense to me because then I thought exactly what you said. I guess being an um, Islander or Pacifica descent, 
yeah. we naturally gravitate towards our elders and our parents yeah. and our grandparents and our 100%. aunties and uncles. Yeah. So h- how how has that been for you? Like being able to oh. transition in and go, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna use yeah. my Pacifica Islandness, if that's even yeah. a word, yeah. to love and care for this. And how have the clients responded? Yeah, yeah, really good question. So um in short. All I have to say is that I have been so blessed. I love, love, love my residents. Um, I, as I have said many a time to many people, you know, these men and women were us, you know. Yeah. And I think one of the saddest things for me is I, I think that aged care, um, there's two things I want to say. I think aged care is the sector of society that um, what do I, I want to say it's a sector of society <laughs> and also in organizations where some would see as a money-making sector. So right. that's one. So we're making money out of our elderly and yeah. our aged, you know, um, community uh, at the same time. Um, it's also um, at the sector of community that we neglect on one hand. You know, it's like, oh, let's make money out of you, but we're not going to um, invest in hearing your stories or really wow. seeing you as a human, um, as somebody that has built community, that has built bridges, that have been surgeons and scientists or doctors. Like, you know, we don't see them in that in that capacity we only see them as an older you know person and so um i love my residents for the fact that part of you know i just love stories and so one of the things that i have been so blessed with is having an opportunity and the privilege which i see that as the absolute privilege to sit with my residents and hear their stories you know and i think you know um and also to hear about their lives, their families, their achievements, yes. their, you know, the things that have broken their hearts as grandparents or great grandparents at that, the things they've achieved in life, who they are as a human being, um, that has been an absolute gift, an absolute gift. I I, um, I, I can resonate with that so much. Like usually yeah. when again, this is me just being naive <laughs> yeah, it's sure. like when we it's 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 a, such a challenging thing as a pacific islander to put your parents in a retirement home like that oh just my word. it's and and i'm not saying it's a bad thing for because obviously my right. my, my my wife's family um they're like their grandparents were in it as well and, and it was sure. fine and yeah. he enjoyed it and they chose to which is fine yeah. but if you come yeah. from a context where it's a village sort of mentality in terms of it's communal, it's sure. it's ainga, it's family. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you are not stepping foot in that place. No. Uh, you know, we'll look after you as, as much as we can. But right. to be able to um, to go into that place, like as you said, it's such a sacred gift because oh. you almost yeah. humanize them. Not to say that they're washed up and they're old and oh well, retirement yeah. village it is. But in a but, way, that's what that's kind of an immediate reaction to okay. retirement. Yes. Uh, spaces. Um, I think that's a reality too, because let's let's be honest. That is kind of a, a way that it has been seen. Yeah. However, my experience yeah. now is it takes a loving family to actually come to a. It is such a difficult place in life and a position yes. to be in um, to have to make that decision knowing that it is the best thing for your person, you know, yeah. uh, to yeah. get the 24 hour, um, the 24 seven care, you know, care yeah. that you otherwise would do. First of all, you're not qualified to, to, um, to look after them in that capacity, uh, nor, nor have the capacity and the resources to do so anyhow. Yeah. So, yeah. What's it like being in, 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 in the role that you are and, mm your relationship with the families who come in oh, and they man. talk they they're talking to their their loved one and then they turn mm. to you or they turn yeah. to a nurse and said who's been chatting to 
our granddad or like who's this yeah. moy person who who is yeah. this person how has oh. your relate has it changed your relationship with the, with a lot of the families who come in oh you know again i want to i want to use the word privileged yeah. um i am in a privileged position to be able to uh, sit with families um, yeah. to be a part of their unit when it's an end of life situation, you know, yeah. um, or have some very, um, you know, sensitive conversations about next steps, you know, uh, how do you care for them, for those who are care consult uh, for their person, you know, how do you, like every decision regarding their parent or their great aunt wow. or great uncle, yeah. It takes careful consideration, you know, and so uh, to be in a position where my office becomes that sacred space for them to be able to come to and say, hey, do you have a moment or um, to be able to even for non-religious people. Okay, yeah, because um, I because I imagine it's not just um, Christian yeah. clients or, or, or no, people that come, it's, it's also yeah. anyone. It's anyone, you know, but knowing that. But this is one of the things that I think it's so important um, for us to be across, and that is chaplaincy and spiritual care um, isn't just about being affiliated with a religious organization. Now, granted, I am a part of a, the Adventist context, you know, and so Advent care is part of the Seventh-day Adventist church Um organization institution so it's it's our aged care arm uh, however our facility um takes in everyone from you know Baptist, All sorts of life. Yeah. the uniting to non-believing or you know yeah. um but it's not just our residents and their families you now have you know your staff as well and so it's across the board and we have um just the blessing of yeah. being a part of their lives, you know, staff, yeah. families, residents across, you know. So um, what has it been like? It's been a hard and beautiful, you know. Hard and beautiful, yeah. You know, um, yeah. because, uh, again, I have been privileged enough for them to invite me to the room and to sit with them while they are basically waiting for their person to pass on, you know. Wow. Uh, that is wow. a sacred space, you know what Absolutely. I mean? And so, or to be invited to be a part of their life celebration. Um, so from that perspective, gift. Oh, gift. man. It, it's difficult. Yeah, that's um, why it's saying it's hard but, but, but beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, but to hold space for the family Ooh. is a gift. You know, it's a yeah. gift. Mm. So, so you have some solid sh shoulders to hold space for these people. Like, and by the time you, get, I can only imagine, right? For any oh. chaplains out there on the work you do, but especially in healthcare, you you may have probably dealt with three or four families who whose loved one, uh, a grandfather, yeah. grandmother, have passed away, and you come back yeah. home. So for yeah. any chaplains out there, everyone's nodding their head going, yep, I know yeah, where, where right. Ray's heading with this. It's like, what do you do with <laughs> yeah. all that? Like right. your poor husband, Adrian's like, I don't want anything to do with that. I want my wife back. I don't, right. I don't want <laughs> her plus the baggage. What do you mm -hmm. do to, to deload, to unload, or to just try and process so you can be in another space like that? That must be challenging. You know, it is, but I think being a pastor and having, again, that was a, that's a, a, a different space again, I guess. W I can't say I'm in therapy now, but therapy has been good for me. Okay. <laughs> <In the past. laughs> I need therapy again for debriefing and all of the things that come with that. But I think having um, been given a, some tools to be able to, um, to be present, you know, so the ministry of presence where with the families, with the right. residents or with the staff right at that moment and the moments that they need you. So to, to actually build up the skill to be able to do that um, has helped, you know, yes. that has helped, you know. So I am able to come home like I am in like physically and emotionally tired when I come away from those spaces but at the same time I have learned to not bring it home you know does yeah. that yeah 
like it I does have, make I sense been... because because yeah. obviously a lot of chaplains who who are in, in whatever industry it's like yeah how do you and i guess it's just a general question yeah. what would be some of the things that you practice to sort of before you get home you've had a heavy day you're in the car big yeah. stuff has happened you're about to open the door walk in and and yeah. greet your family like do yeah. you have certain strategies or things yeah. that you implement before you step through the door to go yep check okay i'm tired yeah check this yeah. is what I'm, what's what's yeah. your process yeah a uh, really good question so i've actually been doing it because i have had to do back-to-back -back funerals you know over the last week and so and you know again you are you are oh, practicing the ministry of presence you know like you're practicing the ministry of presence and so you come away from that on one hand you are elated like all the feels you are elated yeah. that you uh, have been able to be with the families in those spaces but then i've had to uh, I've, i literally ray I would go into the car and I would not start the car until I've taken a few deep breaths, you know, wow. like I love that. literally like I would do the whole like and hold and hold. Yeah. And then I would exhale yep. and I'll do that a couple of times. You do it for a few rounds. Yeah. Just wow. to be able to come back to myself and to also then just, you know, I actually pray and I say, thank you God for yeah. the opportunity to be with the families, mm. I also like in the last couple, I've been able to allow myself to cry because I, I guess, you know, the, it's a gift and a curse at the same time to the, the empathy yes. um, that you feel with the families and you're trying not to take that on too much, but you can't help but do. And so, you know, you grieve with the families. Um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes I will say a prayer and I have a little cry and then, like right. I did that in one of my funerals in last week. Oh, um, bless your heart. You know what I mean? Like, not that that's the case for every um, yeah. occasion, but sometimes it just, you take it on. So, yeah, I take a deep, some deep breaths. I pray a prayer of gratitude and thankfulness for the opportunity and the privilege to be a part of that family's life celebration of their person. What I have learned from my resident in the stories that were shared. Um, I recently said to a person, I'm like, funerals are kind of my favorites. And then I'm like, wait, that sounds really morbid. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a normal person would be like, you're weird. You're, there's something wrong with well, you. I know, I am. I like but to why? walk the cemeteries. Well, explain to us why. Yeah, explain no, to us and why. And the reason why thing. is because it you know to be given a glimpse into somebody's life like the humanizing of the person like yeah. it's not just another dead person in a coffin here wow. was a dad who was so loved by mm. their family who was you know who was the person that taught the sons how to ride the bike or how to wow. hammer a nail like you know it humanizes that person yeah. and so chaplaincy has truly and beautifully allowed me space to learn the depths of spiritual care and chaplaincy, you know, wow. not that pastoral ministry didn't, but like it's a different, it's a, it's a different it's kind. A different, it's it's, it's a almost niche. like it gives you permission to do things you wouldn't yeah. probably normally do had you been yeah. a church pastor. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm just yeah. speaking my yeah. own insecurities. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, yeah. And so like to be allowed into that, to be invited into yeah. that space. But That's yeah, the so key, funerals, right? Yeah. I funerals, I come away. I'm always like, oh, dear Jesus, you know, what would, I, what would my people say about me? What kind of person am I? And I, am I leaving a footprint right. in the world that is, you know, going to be of value and contributing yeah. in such a, you know, positive way. Granted that funerals, we always say nice things about each other. Of course. When the reality, we <laughs> are cranky with the same person at the same time. Yeah. But, it, you know, that filter of you only yeah. get to see the good, I wish that's the case in life as yeah. well. Anyway. Well, I think what you, you said something so powerful there in terms of, being invited into people's space. Like a lot of the work that I do in my yeah. chaplaincy role, you're trying to build a bridge as quick as you can from, from yeah. me to, to you. And you're trying to do, not not you're trying to build the bridge of trust to try and get them on your side or win them over, yeah. as you would say, but just you want to build it so you can have a relationship. And so mm. it takes time. 
And I yeah. know that I've been in my role for a few months now. It's taking time. People yeah. are still, you know, staff members are still going, well, yeah, we sort of like him. And so it's taken a mm -hmm. while. But yeah. you're, what you're saying is, is because of the context of which you work, you get invited into that space. That's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you begin to be invited into that space, yeah. and and sometimes you haven't even tried. I'm sure you were like, oh, okay, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know we rolled like that. I didn't know that was the kind of relationship you had. You thought mm. you were here with this family and this person, yeah. and all of a sudden they're like, please come into yeah. our space, right. be with us, talk yeah. to us, sit with us, sit with sit. us in the grief, you know, wow. sit with us in the suffering, sit with us in the pain, sit with us as we, as we, you know um what's a, uh what's the word as we filter out these emotions and all wow. the conflict and all of those my goodness you know absolute gift yeah. and a privilege a gift i don't know it's a gift of learning <laughs> it's gift of, and it's not for everyone too i think that's no. probably one thing as well like no. we all have different roles in our chaplaincy and again you're mm. in healthcare i'm in high school and defense force and and, I'll yeah. interview, and and again i'll be interviewing different chaplains in different areas but yeah. i would say that you are you are a blessing because I, obviously i know a bit of your backstory as well but yeah. it's just a unique gift to be able to do that and yeah. and not come away feeling like you you're so sad you know some people come with yeah. so sad i couldn't do that i could never yeah. be a chap because you know you're yeah. facing death yeah. You're, you're literally at death's door, not maybe for you, but you, you're literally yeah. watching it happen. Yeah. Yeah. People say, how do you, how do you maintain not sanity yeah. is the word or joy, <laughs> but you, yeah. you, you, you go back to work because yeah. again, there's something there, which we know who it is and what it is yeah. Yeah. that keeps you guys like there's hope, there's Absolutely. hope to be given. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, and you, you touched it like, so, um, so significantly and that is there's hope to be given and I often say to my to my residents I'm like I said to them I know when we talk about hope like a lot of them have grown up with a faith um, tradition where hope is part and parcel of being a faithful person or a spiritual right. person but for some hope um is so hard to grasp. And so I often say to them, you know, you are still here. You still have breath in your lungs, you know. So how can we still contribute? How can we still be present right now while we're still here? And I think sometimes, you know, I, and, and that's one of the things that I really loved. So I've been taking them through um, a series of, like, how to study the Bible. And cool. and so I've is this been the, the the residents? The residents, you know, okay. so how to, you know, what are the skills to study the Bible? Now, these are seasoned people, some, you know, former pastors, teachers, okay. you know, professors, you know, wow. uh, anyway. And so I've been taking those. So, you know, the Bible Project um, okay. on YouTube. So I've been okay. taking Oh, yes, yes, that. yes. The animated, the cartoon. The animated. Yeah. Well, well yeah. I've given one of them like a headache because the animation has been a bit too much for her eyes. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> um but it was so interesting because a couple of them came to came to me actually just this morning. They said, it's a little bit too deep for us. You know, it's just, it's a bit over our heads. And oh, I wow. said, tell me more about that. You know, I love that questioning you just said. Oh, that's you know, so key. Like if you're listening as, as a chaplain, <laughs> she just dropped a mic on what she just said. If you thank didn't you catch ben, that segue. Uh, thank you, Ben Lundquist. <laughs> yes, that's more. right. I, that's right. That's right. And thank you, Growing Together. Sorry uh, for those who are watching. We're together. doing inside jokes at the moment. I know more very well. And <laughs> we so often work but, in the same field. Yeah. But, but, not what, but, yeah. Yeah, but what you said just then, tell me more about that. Like, yeah. that's so, so important, that segue and question. Oh, yeah, wow. but their response was well our, our brains are too old you know oh, our brain like yeah, yeah like that was their response our brains yeah. are too old i'm like so then i'm like well did you know that it doesn't matter how old you are your brain right. is always changing that's the brain side <laughs> like <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like yes but then it makes my brain tired when i'm learning something oh, new i'm like, gonna go know, for a nana nap pun intended <laughs> With that, <laughs> I'm gonna go for a nana nap. Pun intended. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know, like, well, they may actually sleep through the Bible study. Let's be honest, yeah. <laughs> but that's because their brains are like on overload. But again, right. you know, valuing them as a person, mm -hmm. and and not just, um, and not just 
resorting to, oh, I'm just going to do this just because, you know, they're old and they don't want to, you know, it's it the, not take the easy path, but yes. ensuring that your intention is valuing them as a human being with the capacity to still learn. Yes. Even if they think their brains are too old, you know, um, you know what I mean? Like, and so it's, how do you see them still as an amazing woman, woman with the capacity to learn? Um, They are still here. What does that mean? How can you still give meaning and purpose to their lives while they're still here? You know? Wow. You literally um, just answered my next question anyway, because my yeah. next question, which is going to be our final one, was yeah. the next time that any of us see um, an elder member in our community, what do we need to know? And, yeah. and, and, and what can we do for that person? Because often right. we do see them in our in our shopping malls, out and about in the community. And the mm. first thing is like the empathetic, oh. Oh, the, you know, and we feel sorry and, for and, them. Yeah, you feel sorry for them, but and you know, like, I don't think feel if, sorry and, for them. Honor that's them. right. <laughs> well, yeah. that's right. But I guess you, you you did. You literally answered the question. Like, what do we need to know? And and how can yeah. we approach them? Because, like you said, yeah. they're humans. They've lived yeah. a life, and I'm sure they got a story to tell. And Absolutely. you know, treasure them while they're still and and let them know. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to reflect what you're saying that they still have value in the world. They're not washed up. They're not, no. you know, waiting for their time. It's actually no. you still have yeah. much to give and share wisdom, right? Yeah, but they were us, and I think I want to keep repeating that they yes. were us. You know, they were the doctors, they were the engineers, they were the nurses, they were like, you name a profession, they were us. They built the world. Okay, yeah. some you know, of part of the world, maybe some things that we are now correcting as in yeah. our generation. <laughs> However, they contributed to the communities that we now live in. You know what wow. I mean? So yeah. so look at them as somebody that has contributed to community. Look yes. at, at them as somebody's mother, someone's yeah. grandmother or grandfather, as wow. somebody that is so loved by their families um, or somebody that is you know, difficult as well. Like, you know, <laughs> um, see them as somebody that still needs meaning and purpose in their lives and connectedness. Yeah. Yeah. See them as the image of God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, the next time I um, I get grumpy and <laughs> while I'm on the driving behind an elderly couple and go, ah, oh, you guys should be not driving, I should think that could be me. That's going to be me in the future. That- Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I guarantee yeah. you. Boy, thank you so much for your time. I know, I know you you have a busy schedule. Not not busy for the sake of being busy. You have an intentional schedule with your family, with your work. Thank you. And I'm so grateful and appreciative that you made time for me uh for this uh podcast. Again, if thank you for people, the honor of being here. Oh, look, absolutely. And so um if people want to find more ab- about what you do and where you work, where like where do they need to where can they um, find you and, so and I'm touch on base? I'm on yep. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Facebook, right. Instagram. Okay. Um, okay. I'm on the on the, a couple of those platforms. A couple. Of, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Moy. 